Angie Carpenter has been Islip Town supervisor for almost a decade, giving her a bird's eye view of the red wave that has swept Long Island. Before we talk about the red wave, I want to talk to you about um, housing in Long Island. And I know that uh, it's been an interesting uh, road for Governor Hochul to, to try because Governor Hochul is trying to get housing around transit areas. And I wonder your view of developing housing alternatives around train stations and other places in Islip and Long Island. Well, in Islip, we are a textbook example of transit-oriented development. Uh, we just opened up, we, the developer. Bayshore? Uh, in Bayshore, right across the street from the railroad station, a bus stop right in front of the development about a block or half a block from the downtown area, two blocks from the ferry, and an Uber ride away from the airport. So you don't get much more transit oriented than that. So how that. did you do that? The, the governor has had a difficult time convincing localities to do that. There's been a lot of pushback in Albany and she wasn't able to get a large consensus to do it, you know, citywide, statewide, Long Island wide, any wide. Well, and I I've, wonder how you were able to, to see it as an option and to make it happen? Well, I think community engagement is very important and I've told any developer that comes in with a project, especially if it's a substantial one like that, that you've got to reach out to the community, reach out to the chambers, to the civics, bring them in, you know, have them be a part of the process, get their input. And we did that with that project. We did that with another project on 87 acres in Central Islip that is uh, has been developed. In fact, it's being leased up now. And uh, I've had those conversations with the governor. In fact, we invited her to come to Bayshore, and she actually stood in that development called Shoregate. And I said to her, you know, you have to understand, we locally know how to do it. Give us an opportunity to do it. Doing it from a state level isn't necessarily the right answer. So you want right to do it answer. yourself as opposed to exactly. being imposed on you by the right. state of New York. Exactly, exactly. So you have been in this job for almost a decade, and I, we should point out that Islip is the third largest town in the state, but it gives you a bird's eye view of the red wave that has swept Long Island. I wonder why you think it's happened and whether it will continue. Well, I think people struggle every single day. The cost of living has gone up. We see people leaving our area. They're struggling to stay here, whether they're, you know, empty nesters who want to stay on Long Island with their family but feel forced to leave because taxes are just too high, or it's young people looking to stay. And uh, So we, why have people, you know, decided that the Republicans are the ones who can do that? Well, I think that, you know, the Republican Party has portrayed itself and has demonstrated itself as one of less government, less intrusion. And I think people like to hear that. The latest issue with the housing, people really pushed back on the governor. And I know that she was well-meaning and, you know, I've had those conversations with her, even though we're different political less parties. Less government, less pressure from the state. Yeah. Yeah, I really think that, and work with us, you know, work with us. And she has an opportunity now. I've given it to her. Uh, we have a project at our airport, Long Island MacArthur Airport, that we have been working diligently on for years to try to expand the service that we have there. The New York City air, airports are so congested, and we offer an incredible opportunity at Long, Long Island MacArthur Airport. And uh, there's a project on the books and is very near... Uh, to starting if we get a commitment from the governor uh, for some infrastructure funding. I've asked her for $150 million to help with the infrastructure necessary. It's Midway Crossing. It's a multi-billion dollar project anchored by a life sciences center. The kinds of so jobs... So basically you want to have more uh, flights that would leave MacArthur, which would relieve the congestion Absolutely. at the other New York airports. Yeah, we've actually just yesterday uh, I had an opportunity to go into JetBlue headquarters and meet with some of the leadership team there and talk about the opportunities that we have at our airport. Would you have to extend the runways there? No, no. So the, the runways, runways are fine? Can, everything is ready to go. We've got plenty of ticket counter space. We have plenty so of airspace. So what's $150 million for? Well, for, for the Midway Crossing project, which again is a multi-billion dollar project that not only provides a tremendous amount of construction jobs, but sustainable long-term jobs into the future. We're talking six-figure jobs. It is anchored by a life sciences center, convention center, hotel, 
a, a massive project, and but it's going to need infrastructure uh, investment. So that's $150 million to help start with the roads that have to be constructed or reconstructed, grade crossing, upgrades, et cetera. So let's talk politics for a minute. Okay. Long Island has <clears throat> a number of freshman Republican congressmen who want to keep their jobs in November, and they're going to be under intense uh, scrutiny and attack by Democrats who want to stop them from going back to Washington. What are going to be the key issues? And, you know, the Democrats are trying to paint them as um, uh, anti-abortion. And is that going to be a key factor in whether they can keep, keep hold on their positions? Well, first of all, as a woman, and I'm sure you can relate to it, I don't think that belongs being an issue in, in government, you know. But it's a, going to be. It, it shouldn't be. It shouldn't be. And I think Trump, uh, and I'm not a big rah-rah Trump supporter, don't get me wrong, you know, but he was right to say that belongs with the states. That is not something that should be debated on so a you national don't think level. That, so in other words, the candidates who are going to run the Republicans who are now in office, um, you, you don't think that they should rise to the bait that the Democrats are going to throw at them of saying that they're anti-abortion? Absolutely. I, I think that's a very fair statement. They shouldn't rise to that bait. They should run on their records. They should run on their records of being responsive to the people that they represent in their districts. They're all running for re-election. Uh, we have Andrew, uh, Andrew Garmarino, Congressman Garmarino, uh, Esposito, Lalota. They have all proven that they're working for the people. And I think the thing that the Democrats are really struggling with is the fact that they've got someone in the White House who really isn't doing what he should be doing. The economy is bad. Uh, you know, the cost of a loaf of bread and and people are seeing it. They're seeing it and they're realizing it's coming. The trickle down from Washington is affecting everyone from, you know, just going to the supermarket. So um, I think that's uh, what the Democrats should be concerned about. So we only have about 30 <laughs> seconds left, but you, so you think that inflation and the high cost of living under the Democrats is going to be a key issue um, in the November elections. Absolutely, absolutely. It's all about it's all about the money, and it's all about the fact that people are struggling to make ends meet, struggling to stay here. The state of New York has lost a lot of population. We've been pretty solid, you know, on the island, and I think it's because of the governance that the Republican townships have shown: Brookhaven, Hempstead. Uh, Smithtown and of course Islip. <laughs> we have to get in a plug for Islip. Absolutely. And on that note, we're going to have to leave it there for right now, but we'll be right back. We're back with another bonus conversation you'll only see here on CBS News New York. So I'm curious, what exactly got you into politics? Oh my gosh, uh, being involved in the community. Uh, you know, Chamber of Commerce. I had a business in town for many, many years, and people would always say, oh, you should run for office. And at the time that uh, I did decide to really take it seriously, the gentleman who had been a county legislator before had run for Congress, defeated an 18-year incumbent, by the way, Hello. and that was Rick Lazio, and he went off to Congress and it created a vacancy. So and I... And the rest is history. And the rest is history. Have you ever regretted it? No. No, not Good one answer. bit, not one bit. So do you think it's important that people get involved in politics at the local level and in, in general, government work? Oh, absolutely. And from the very basics of voting, registering to vote and being a part of the process, don't complain about how things are running if you haven't even voted, you know? Um, and New York has really low voter... It's turnout. terrible. It's terrible. My daughter-in-law is from Brazil, and if you don't vote there, you get fined. Should we do that here? <laughs> Why not? We're charging to drive into Manhattan extra. Why not? <laughs> I was going to ask you about congestion. <laughs> I guess you don't like congestion pricing. No, it's not really. Well, why don't thing. you, as you know, you're the Islip supervisor. Why don't you ask the MTA for a piece of the congestion pricing pie to help with what's going on in Islip and, and better the, con the, the transportation there? Well, you see these mugs, I'd probably have more positive reaction if I tried to get the mugs to give me that money because I've been trying to do that with sales tax. Sales tax is collected in the county across the state of New York. In our county, it's 8.625 percent. Not one penny of it comes to the towns. It, half of it goes to the county, half of it goes to the state. Yet so how much to, do you want of that? I think I would take a percent and be very happy. 
Well, okay. Well, we'll tell the governor about that. <laughs> okay. So I wondered, you know, what's your favorite way to spend a Sunday? Oh, you know, I, I love being with my family. You know, I have two grandkids and uh, a wonderful husband who allows me to do what I do, never nags me about, oh, you're going out again tonight or you're going out on the weekend. This weekend it'll be Little League openings, you know, so. I get it. But uh, it, it's all great. It's a wonderful opportunity to be there for the community, to listen to them and hopefully make a difference. Do you have a pet peeve? Uh, yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> you know, off the top of my head, I've got to say, people expecting that I can make everything right, uh, especially like they'll complain, you know, that road, I can't stand how Montauk Highway and, and Sunrise Highway and the Parkway, why aren't you paving it? It's a state road, you know, so <laughs> understanding the, the jurisdictions sure. and what you can and can't do. I'm not so, a miracle worker. So, <laughs> no, nobody is. What's the best piece of advice you've ever been given? Oh, gosh. You know, my mom, you know, work hard and you can be anything you want to be. I tell that especially to girls all the time. Girl Scouts will come in to me and I'll point to that wall in our town boardroom that has all of these pictures hanging in 335 years in the town of Islip. I'm the first female supervisor ever elected. That's amazing. Yeah. So as the first female supervisor, what's the proudest moment you've had since you've been doing the job? Oh gosh, uh, I love the fact that we're making a difference in the community, uh, fixing our parks. We have done a tremendous job. We have over 100 parks. We've got a brand new swimming pool opening. It was a $20 million project. Being able to see that happen and certainly working on the airport and trying to um, have that service enhanced at Long Island MacArthur Airport and uh, see that Midway Crossing project And you want to get buttons that, may, that say, I flew out of MacArthur Airport, Absolutely. Right? We'll get you one. <laughs> okay. I'll wear it on the show. Uh, promise. And, <laughs> Angie Carpenter, <laughs> thank you so much for joining me. And thank you at home for joining us as well.